All right, thank you for letting me know that the microphone wasn't working. We're going to have to leave a comment on the video and be like, hey, <laughs> audio doesn't start till about one minute. We, we, we glitched. Thank you, guys. All I was saying was, hello, everybody. All oh, Compass, our newest channel member. Thank you, Comp Don, right? It was Don. Welcome, Don. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you. Every Thanks, everyone, for supporting the channel. You guys just being here and supporting the channel. So thank you, guys. Um, we're going to continue the Colburn Bible because you've been having so much fun. So much fun. Thank you, guys. Um, okay. Well, Colburn Bible, shall we get cracking? Shall we just start running this bad boy? We're on chapter t chapter 12, the rolls of record 6. Incomplete and fragmentary. Should I try to drink this tea? It is so hot. It's hummingbird sage, salvia spathace, spathacea. And it is a wonderful little herb to have on deck. One of my favorites. It's surprisingly rare. It only grows in really shaded, really wet, kind of, it's like this, it's like the water loving variety of sage and um, produces this, these nugs that are just glistening with trichomes and it smells like starburst. It's one of the most, Oh man, tastiest smells of a plant period. Um, if you guys ever ch get a chance to stumble upon some hummingbird sage during springtime, oh, 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 okay, well. It's way too hot, I'm not even gonna try that. Hmm. Paul, Paul Crow, Brandy, Salavi. Um, greetings everyone, greetings. Without further ado, I'm your host, Keith Mattelers, Knowledge, Information, and Entertainment. Hopefully, at the very least, we are reading the book four of the Colbrum Bible. We are on chapter 12, the rolls of record six. Let me make sure my check, check. Check, check, check. All right. Audio capture is looking good. Audio capture is looking good. 36. All right. Here we go. Check. One, two, one, two. We'll hit him with the slow fade. Hit him with the slow fade on the on the low fi And then we'll we'll Oh, there it is. You guys know what that means. means it's time for our occult audiobook readings starting in T minus 27 seconds. God, it's so hot still. I don't understand how this cup works so well. I can't drink it yet. Let's, our, I need you guys' help. We, our, our intention is to get like 50 people in here just vibing hard to these audiobook readings, right? We're gonna be 50, 75, 100, 100, 200 people in the live every time just slapping, you know what I mean? So we gotta set that intention. Experience the gratitude, what it feels like when the rooms grow, what it feels like when the channel grows. What it feels like when we hit that hashtag 100 mil, baby. And what it feels like when we start solidifying that pure potential, solidifying that magic that's just beyond our physical reach, just waiting for us right on the other side of the veil. And what it feels like that magic think that that magic moment when we finally ah materialize that bad boy and it's just like the world is a little more colorful it's a little brighter it's a little more magic just hold that feeling hey mcq what's up brother 
It's a, I don't know what kind of cup it is. It's happy haunting. It might be a Yeti cup. <laughs> All right. Vamonos. Allons-y. Let's go. Chapter 12. The Rolls of Record 6. An Incomplete Fragmentary. Before we left Droidash, they brought living sheep and goats and hung them upon a tree standing in the place of assembly. Birds of bright colors, and of course, now the dog starts going. For those of you that are, that are new to what's going on, I'm recording into my software live, so when stuff happens on the outside, I, I do have to stop. And the snap lets me know when I'm editing where there are mistakes so that I don't have to listen to the whole recording over again. So you guys get to see some of the behind the scenes process. Shout out Altruge and Grace for that tip, by the way. Okay, so I dosed the dogs out next door with edibles about an hour ago, so they, sh they should be pretty chill tonight. <laughs> I just threw pieces of bread over the fence. <laughs> and the neighbor kind of caught me this time. I was like, oh shit, I had to run back inside real quick. But, um... Yeah, they, sh they shouldn't give us too much trouble because I put a lot of butter on that bread. Um, you're welcome, dogs, because I'm sure they're enjoying themselves right now. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. I guess we'll just might as well just start this whole audio file over since we didn't actually do anything yet. Chapter 12. The Rolls of Record 6. An Incomplete Fragmentary. Before we left Droidash, they brought living sheep and goats and hung them upon a tree standing in the place of assembly. Birds of bright colors and things of worked gold and silver were hung upon the branches, perfumes and oils with garments. They danced about the tree, and hewn wood was brought and laid against it. Three maidens came, and it was lit and burnt as an offering to success. We went northwards and came to a strand where many strips were drawn up and armed men such as we had not seen before were disputing among themselves with great noise. We drew off, for they were foreign to us, but others came behind and we were taken in among them and brought before Albanik, the leader of the armed men. They pushed around us and some cried out for blood. They wished to take our ships and our possessions, but the leader said, Leave the deed until morning, for if blood flows now, it will not cease with the foreigners. That night, the wife of Albanik spoke to him and said, It would be a foolish thing and an evil deed to slay these strangers, for they have wisdom and are men of learning. Why destroy something you may use to good end? Watch out, Bubba. Dad is working right now. Hey, come here. Dad is working. You want to say something real fast? Say hi real fast. It's Okay, Bubba. Go inside. Dad is working. That night the wife of Albanik spoke to him and said, It would be a foolish thing and an evil deed to slay these strangers, for they have wisdom and are men of learning. Why destroy something you may use to good end? The leader listened to her advice, for he knew there would be many wounded men. The leader listened to her advice, for he knew there would be many wounded men, and none more skilled than we to attend them. 
Because she was carrying a child, our lives were spared and our goods restored to us. Maybe I didn't give the dogs enough edibles this time. That makes me sad. Or maybe they didn't kick in yet. The commander among the captains was a warrior who, while hunting, had slain his own father, and so had to flee his own land. Balls. Oh, you guys don't hear them? I know I can't hear them in my in my headsets, which I which I think means they're not actually being picked up by the microphone. So we might be in the clear. Well, we'll run it. If I have to do it over when they bark, I do it over. All right. <clears throat> the commander among the captains, the commander among the captains was a warrior who, while hunting, had slain his own father and so had to flee his own land. With him, he had taken the queen captured by sly and subtle means, but we feared him not for Albinic looked upon us with favorable eyes. Of the warriors who came with us, there were a score of men from Elopinos. They were, they wore helmets. They wore helmets of bronze with plumes of scarlet and purple. Their shields were of bronze burnished, so that they shone like the sun and were edged with a band of hardened metal. In lengths, in length, they were having trouble catching a vibe right now. Come on, Keith, breathe. Relax. Oh, yeah. Catch the flow, Keith. Come on, brother. In length, there were two and a half cubits, and in width, one and a half cubits. They had spears of unknotted wood six cubits in length, with blades of hard metal set in sockets. Their swords were of pure hard metal worked in a strange way, and in length one and a half cubits, and in width three fingers breadth. They were horn handled and bound about with wire of copper and silver. Some among them were armed with war javelins and darts. They had a curious dart that turned over itself in flight, and another that struck in from the side. In battle they stood three and three to withstand the rush of the enemy, but they were weak in attack, for they moved heavily. With them were slaves and six score attendants who were plunderers of the battlefield, pillagers of the land, the cooks, the baggage keepers, and the carriers of burdens. The warriors were the battle craftsmen. In seven days all the ships sailed together and in seven days came upon some land by the sea. It was a place of the dead where all was desolation. In the center of the land by the sea there stood a temple which had fallen into itself, for there were no people to keep it. The leaders and the chief among them went up to the temple and made sacrifices to their gods whose voices they wished to hear. The daughter of Laban, the armorer, had hidden herself in the opening behind the phlegm and spoke to them in a strange tongue. They heard her voice and thought it came from a shadow god. She told them of the land of her mother called Belharia, and bid them find their way there. She told them to take the Beth. She told them to take the Bethadon with them, for they brought good fortune and were beloved by the gods. The leaders went out from the temple, believing they had been granted a vision. We sailed with a large company towards the west and had nothing to fear except the whirlpool. For well, the red men with us knew the way of the waters. For long days we saw only the sea, and the laying siding birds all came back. We went out through the mouth of the sea into the sea of the great river, past the lands of white copper to the place of painted men, where we drew up the ships and staked them. Among the fighting men were some from Sparsia, whose leader was Corin, called the Axemen but whom we named the Cunning One. 
These went out into the forest to hunt, and the king of that place sent men to take them, but they refused to go, and there was a loud dispute. The bodyguard with the leader of the painted men were bowmen, and one shot an arrow at Corin. He slew a side behind his shield, and the arrow churned into the throat of a painted man who held a sword against him. This started a great fight between the forest and sea, and though surrounded by many enemies, Corin fought through them. The battle was hit. The battle was his because he went forward through the forest and attacked the houses of the painted men. The ships were divided, and those who wished to set up the eagle and serpents went to the harbor of giants in Bilharia. The same giants are builders of temples, and they are six cubits tall. The ship with Corrin stayed with us, and he hunted them out of their caves and slew them all, save one giantess. She came to us, bound as a surety for the life of the wife of Albanik. We came to a bay on one side of which was a forest, and on the other a plain where herds grazed. For the men of that place it was the first time of the Feast of Fires, and they held games upon the shore and ran races and cleared lands behind. At this time they would not fight, so we met them in peace. They wore garments woven in two parts and belted with hide. They cap. They had caps of skin or leather, and the tunic which hung about them was darkly colored in blue and green and brown. They enclosed their legs and feet in dressed skins bound in front with throngs. They had many ornaments of copper, but very little gold or silver, though their arm ra- though their armbands and brooches shone like silver. They had the art of making copper like silver or gold. These people hold a great feast before the beginning of the heat, when their god Mago appears. Inside the god were the spirits of men whom the god had eaten, and their voices could be heard calling for deliverance from darkness. Because of the feast, these people demanded the giantess, and she was given over to them for the days of feasting. We did not know the ways of these people, and when we saw they wished us to drink blood, we drew apart from them. The headman sent a messenger to us, and Corn and the giantess wrestled together, but the giantess was the stronger, so Corn lured her towards the cliff's edge. Corn taunted her and laughed at her clumsiness, and then at the break of the cliff he tricked her, so that she rushed forward. As she passed beside him, he turned behind her and pushed, so that she fell over the cliff onto a large so that she fell over the cliff edge onto a large black rock below. Her back was broken. The same black rock was later split and taken up to be worshipped. In the place to which we came, the deathless stars ride high. The odds rests on the morning, and the watchman at the gate of the sky sits at the eastern tiller in the evening. The falcon is rarely seen clearly. This is the land of Dada. We warned them. But they would not listen. They were fasting before the battle, the sacred fast before they ate the meat of the offerings. We buried salt beneath the floors of their houses so that no man would live there again. When the horns sounded the alarm and danger threatened, these shrewd bargainers came running to us. Their faces were wet with the sweat of fear and their lips trembled. When the danger was past, they came out with chests puffed up and tongues bragging about their deeds. They were the first to push forward for a share in the plunder. Corn left to seek them. He took two ships but did not return to his children. The leader may be carried away, but the lowliest of those who followed him has a will which need never be broken. Now when men wish to say a thing is impossible, they say, Where is Corn?" End of chapter 12. <clears throat> so, so, uh, they found these texts to beat up and translated them, so a lot of these chapters might not have no uh, might not have any context to them because they're cut off in places and they sort of had to paraphrase because you know, sentences were missing and stuff like that. So if you're having trouble following along, like what the hell is going on? No, that's that's what's going on. <laughs> Thank you.
Bucking faster. <laughs> oh no, did we lose the stream? <sighs> no, we're still good. Chapter 12. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is chapter 13 now. Let's see. Yes, chapter 13. Chapter 13. Ooh. Before I start, make sure this is running. Make sure that's running. All right, everyone, stretch your toes, right? Wiggle your toes around, wiggle them really fast. Richie told me once if you wiggle your toes really fast for like 12 seconds, as fast as you can, that it circulates all the blood in your body or some wild sorcery like that. So wiggle your toes. Drink some water real quick. Take a deep breath. If you'd like to support the channel, slap the like button. Let's proceed with chapter 13. Chapter 13, The Rolls of Record, 7. In the seven and twentieth year came Emos. In the seventh and twentieth year came Emos, who was a learned man. And with him came Zadok, who was one of us. Masu, son of Shanthel, came also and others in four large ships. Kita came in a ship apart. They were welcomed, and Kita set up a... dose the neighbor's dogs with edibles, but I can't dose all the neighborhood dogs with edibles, so when the neighborhood dogs bark, it triggers mine, so... <laughs> if only there was enough for them all. They were welcomed, and Kita set up a place of learning, and many came and sat before him. When Kita died, those whom he had taught said, let us record the knowledge of our master so that, it, so that it may be added to the records and not lost. We who are the pupils of Kita and have been blessed by him and purified by water shall be one. From this day we will call ourselves by the name he has given us, which is Bartha Het Shah Hethed. The meaning of the words is lost. God and goodness are one and alike. God is not a person, but the Supreme Spirit. He made the earth so that it brought forth man and woman, and they lived together in a faraway land where everything was pleasant, even the forests. Woman tempted man so that he ate something. Woman tempted man so that he ate something which was part of God, and man was punished, for he is responsible for woman. Children were born in their generations and multiplied until earth was filled. They built cities of stone and cut channels for water to flow away and made lakes. They were cunning workers in stone and in wood and in ivory. They were cunning workers in stone and in wood and in ivory. They made instruments from firestone and pottery in many colors. They raised up temples to the sunlight and worshipped inside many pillars, but within the temples were inner temples where greater things were known. In the land of copper, which was the land of the golden light, one man in twelve was a priest. There were priestesses who took care of them and watched over the sacred elements within the temples. The headdresses of the priests were red and they wore feathers and cloaks of black. They had circlets of gold and beads of silver and there was a spiral of black stones at their wrist. 
There was war between those who lived within the city and those who lived beyond its limits. Those who lived within the great city grew all kinds of things and clothed themselves with the labor of their lands. Those who lived outside the city were hairy hunters clad in the skin of wild animals. Outside the grounds of the city there was a holy mountain and priests lived within it. The men of the city brought them herbs and fruit with bread and wine. The men who were not of the city brought them sheep and goats and beasts of the chase. The men of the city loved wealth, like sweetie, like city dwellers, and were less generous than those who gained their food by strength and hunting. The men of the city held back portions of their dues and caused the priests to look upon them less kindly. When the great day of the sun came and the high priest gave his blessing of fruitfulness, he withheld it from the city dwellers and gave it only to the hunters and herdsmen. That night, when those who had received the blessings were rejoicing beside the mountain, the city dwellers fell upon them and slew many. This was the cause of a great war in which many men died. Men did Men did to men what their natures inclined them to do, but they also ravaged women and children. The evil grew in greatness until the land could no longer contain it and had to be purged clean. Therefore, the revenging dragon was called up out of the heavenly abyss and at last the land with fire and thunder. The whole land was filled with its smoky breath and the men choked to death. The land was split apart between the city and the mountain, and the sea rolled in upon it, so that the city was destroyed. The valleys of the mountain were filled with dead men and animals and with trees. The high priest survived with seven others who were priests. He brought these together with one hundred and ten men and their wives and children into Labeth, which is a land among high cliffs at the edge of the wide plain. Here the priests sought to preserve their wisdom and knowledge and pass it on to the children, but it became distorted and misunderstood. They did not understand the radiating power from the bodies of the dead, which could be got... Which could... Which could guide the living. Even we do not understand these things clearly. The priests who came from the lands of copper could make their soul depart from the body at their command and return as they willed. When ignorant men saw seemingly dead bodies return to life when the soul came back into them, they thought the same could happen to a dead body if it kept long enough. Even this superstition stays with us. Later, when they had left Laburn, men believed that if they kept a dead body so that it remained whole, the soul would not finally enter the sphere of accounting. Such was the knowledge of their wickedness and fear of their fate that they used every art to prevent the body falling apart and entering decay. They may have believed that until the soul entered the sphere above earth it remained flexible and capable of acting to counter some of the ill effects of a life of wickedness and ignorance. Later still, the light of truth dimmed until it could scarce be seen. But always there were the few within the many, and the many hid them. The light of the few was a precious thing safeguarded with diligence and care. The people knew the many, but the few remained unknown their treasure safe. Gods multiplied, but those who sought truth among them could always find it if they were sincere and diligent seekers. It was then as it is now. A nation was once made from the blood of kings, and it became great and good. The light of truth was revealed to this nation, and it rejoiced in the light, but in a few generations it accepted the light as being something to which it was entitled by heritage. So the nation became careless in the preservation of the light. It was kept in a poorly built and neglected shrine. The winds of adversity came and the light was blown out. Another nation was made from the blood of sturdy herdsmen and the lamp of truth was lit among them. They too rejoiced in the light for a few generations and cherished it in a house of gold. 
Then a powerful king coveted the house of gold and came with many armed men and drove out the guardians together with their light. The guardians built a house of reeds for the light, but because the house was so humble, they no longer bothered to guard it closely. Then some drunken men came by, staggering like ships with broken steering oars, and the house of reeds was knocked over. The light within it burst into an all-consuming flame, and not only the house of reeds, but the house of gold was also destroyed. Still another nation was made out of slaves, and they lit a lamp from the eternal flame which belongs to all men. Because they had no veil over their light, they were blinded and thought it the only light. They became arrogant and called themselves the chosen of God. But it was they who made the choice, not he. Though their God was a God above earth and their God, he was not the God of mankind. And though he serves the Supreme Spirit, he is not the Supreme Spirit. So it is that the children of light understand that. So it is that the children of light understand that the majority of men who seek the light are like children playing about a brazier. As a man long confined in darkness is blinded by the sunlight, so are most men blinded when brought into the presence of the light of truth, even though it be heavily veiled. Only gradually can men be brought out of darkness into light. I like that. That's a nice line. Only gradually. Yet even the children of light have been divided among themselves, and one institution became two. The institute, the institution of the East claims it is the true guardian of the written records. But now we have books written even before those copied by the scribes of Haskia. We are not the children of the lesser light, and we know the mysteries of the hidden light. Only we in the cold north will survive, for did not Amos write? Our destiny lies in a much bleaker land where our seed will be planted in strange soil. It will lie within the bosom of an untamed land until quickened to growth by the warmth of the desires of men. Kita taught that this means we should not seek to spread or reveal the light until our day of destiny, which must lay ahead. Therefore, those who say we must multiply our strength or be lost like a bead among the wheat harvest are mistaken. They talk against our destiny, which is written and unalterable. We know nothing of our first leader in light except that he was a priest warrior skilled with the spear and he lived in times of war. His name is not recorded, for he said, True masters are to be known by their works and not by their names. They who seek to stand forth from other men and raise themselves up to increase their stature before the generations seek vain glory. He also said, I am no more than the storehouse into which the harvest is gathered. The good grain within comes from many fields and is produced by the labor of many men. If I said all this if I said all this is my own growing, I would die. Therefore, so that men cannot attribute undeserved greatness to me, I make myself faceless, and men may see as they will. In those days the children of light were sought out and persecuted. No man knew another by his name, for the tools of the tormentors awaited them. Many were hung by the river bait feet uppermost, for the governor said, These people read their books upside down. The women they consigned to houses of pleasure, so that many died in their degradation. We know that the first leader of light was among the highborn of Egypt, and his name was struck on marble pillars. He was cast down because he carried the lamp of truth, and his name was removed from the records of Egypt. He raised an army, but it was like a goat attacking a wild bull, and he was slain in the great marshlands lying near Ethiopia. Whoops. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> he wrote the book which is known to all in the book of rites and ceremonies, which is known only to the elect. He did not write the three books in the lion urn. 
which we alone know, or the Book of the Secret Way. He may have written the Book of Instruction for the children of the written word within the children of light. The manner of keeping the book is taught from generation to generation. The books are our foundation, our shield, our sword. They are our promise and our hope, our guide and our defense. It is said now as in the days of our fathers and their fathers and the generations before them that men steal our words and light their lamps from our flame. This may be so, but we have gathered seeds from the flowers of wisdom wherever they grew and planted them within our own garden. Shall we then deny to others what we ourselves have taken? Is it not written that no man can make truth, but many can find it if they seek? Therefore is not truth the property of all men, even though most spurn it. For truth is not a pleasant draught. Nevertheless, it is true also that we may keep the truth as we find it secured to ourselves. If a man seek unwrought gold and find it, he has not made it, yet it is still his. It is not also... Is it not also written, Gold is the treasure of a lifetime, but truth is the treasure of eternity. Gold can nourish the body, but it may poison the soul. Which do men treasure most in this place, gold or wisdom? Is it not the earthly thing they can hold in their hands and not the treasure they can safeguard in their hearts? The things they hold in their hands and hearts are already being weighed on the scales of fate and our destiny decreed accordingly. Many in this place who seek the light and have gone so far and no further declare this is not what they sought and go back discarding what they have. Yet if a man... Yet if a man seek gold and find silver, does he throw it away? Better half a loaf than no loaf at all. If gold were as plentiful as copper, it would be valued less than silver. Only the things hard to obtain have value. And what is more difficult to discover than eternal truth, which must be sought beyond the boundaries of earth? Only the beginning of the long road towards it here, and it is the beginning you must seek. Every journey has a beginning and an end, and you can make your way only in one direction. If you are dispirited, be comforted by the knowledge that you need only find the beginning of the road. Then, having found it, let every step take you be in the right direction. The journey is long and the road rough and stony, but do not turn back before you reach the first staging post. You will find new strength and encouragement there. Our light was lit in the land of our beginnings. Many books were made and kept in four places, and we were in truth children of the written word. There were scribes and readers, officials and guardians. There were servants and those who served in the courtyards. Then strangers came into the land of our beginnings and brought practices which were different but more acceptable. They promised an easier road. They displayed deceitful marvels, the usual baits thrown to the ignorant. Their hands were heavy against us, and what could we show except truth arrayed in her earthly robes of simplicity? Even the princes turned against their own customs, and the twin priesthoods of the undergods became earthwise and corrupt. Few were ready to undergo the perils of initiation. No more were prepared to accept the austere life prescribed. As spiritual barrenness spread, evil practices crept in to fill the places vacated by the sacred mysteries. The candidates accepted into the body of light became fewer and fewer. As the name the children of light is written in the old characters, it may also be read as the children of the written word, and this is a truth. We alone preserve our secrets in this manner. The children of light followed a destined course by abandoning the the children of light followed a destined course by abandoning ah abandoning abandoning the children of light followed a destined course by abandoning their altars in the land of their beginnings and went to dwell among strangers where many ate at one table 
We do not know what befell of their books, for those we have are rewritten. We know the children of the written word went northward after the scattering, but we do not know where... We know the children of light... We, we know the children of the written word went northward after the scattering, but we do not know what were their journeyings. We know about Lothan and Kobel Kai, designer of houses who sailed around the edge of the earth. With them was Raleb the scribe who knew hidden mysteries. They gathered the records which were in Kindia and carried them along the journey. Actually, let's pull. The dogs are barking. We'll take a little breather right there. This is a long chapter. How you guys doing out there? We're taking a quick... Give me a moment to... <laughs> catch my breath. Pyramid 7, what's up? Glad you found your way back here. They always come back. They always come back. How you guys enjoying the text so far? Back the clock to the dawn of time and sing your song with me. <sighs> hey, sorry, we just had a whole bunch of people join in the room. Sorry, I'm not reading at the moment. The dogs are barking, and we just read for like half an hour straight, so I'm drinking some tea and letting the dogs get the bark out of their system. It's, it's, they're almost done. But it is a much needed rest. So, hey, if you're, if you're here, where are you guys watching from? I'm over here on California. Ventura, California, to be more, a little more precise, if you know where that is. Um, it is 8 o'clock at night, and we're just reading some tunes. We're li listening to some tunes and reading some old books. Because who doesn't listen to some... Who, who doesn't enjoy a good lesson and a good tunage? You know? Yarro? Andrew Wentz. What does pretty wavy mean? <sighs> ambient, ambient orca. Thanks, brother. Thank you, thank you. Um, Texas. Hello, Tejas. Greetings, Tejas. If you guys would like to support the channel, subscribe. Boom. There you go. S support. Support. We c we came. We saw. We conquered. Line them up. We knock them down. Or like the video. 4.56. 4.56 a.m. Tomorrow. Right? In New Zealand? No, no, no. 4.56 a.m. Tomorrow. Or something like that. You're a time traveler, Don. Okay, let's keep going with the... <sighs> they gathered the records, which were in Kindia, and carried them the long sea journey, believing the records safer among the barbarians than among those who sought to destroy them. If the records are destroyed by barbarians, it will be done in ignorance and not in the knowledge of wickedness. Many books were laid open to the eyes of ignorant men and destroyed. Hold on, I'm getting a lot of, um, a lot of fan noise from my computer real quick. That my mic might be picking up. Let me go ahead and... Turn that down a bit. Uh, 
All right. They came here to the harbor of sorrow, which lies by the hazy sea away from the land of mists. There great trees grew and smaller trees upon them, and moss hung from them like door curtains. It lay near the great shallow waters south of the Isle of Hawhage and north of the Sea Pass. Green pearls are found there. Many died in the harbor of sorrow, for it was a place with a curse upon it, which caused an evil sickness. The sons of fire came with the sky and saved them, and they came to this place and built a city. Labron, the son of Koreb, was governor. And chapter 13, how long was that chapter? 24 minutes. It was a 24-minute reader right there. Check, check. Here we go. Sorry. <sighs> PM Thursday. Oh, PM. 4.56 p.m. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Well, I guess that makes more sense. You're way further than like eight hours ahead, right? That's like Europe, I think, would be 4 a.m. Listening from Northern Washington? All right, ambient. I like that. Missing the cold, but not missing what spiritual activity the cold brings. Interesting. That's a very ominous comment on being orc. Ominous orc? You're going to call you ominous orca from now on. <laughs> All right. Shall we continue with chapter 14? No, chapter 14 is kind of short. We're going we're gonna to run it. Also... I'm going to have to re-record chapters 1 through 8 because I somehow deleted them when I was doing a computer purge last week. And I deleted the first seven chapters of recording I did. Balls. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, it's all right because I'll have my squad here with me, right? I'll have my squad here with me. We'll be doing it up. Six AM in Cape Town, South Africa. Charmaine Charmant Charmant Lotier. Hello Charmant Lotier. Alright, we're gonna keep reading this because the next chapter is kinda short. Here we go. Actually let me set up the auto file first. And here we go. Chapter fourteen. The Rolls of Record, 8. <laughs> nice timing on that piano. Come on, zoom in. This was originally transcribed in full, but many portions of the written pages are missing. The sister of Kabul Kai was born in the house of Sothis, and her name was Amarai. The sister of Kabul Kai was born in the house of Sothis, and her name was Amarahiti. There were four children, and one still remains among us. Amarahiti was said to be a lovely faced woman. Bastard dogs. Bastard dogs. Guess we can just vibe to the piano music. <laughs> we can just be um, we can be ambient orcas together and just enjoy the ambience. Okay. In the days when the city was being built, the barbarians came and went freely among us. The barbarians came and went freely among us. 
Many came but stood off and watched from afar, for they did not understand our ways. Among those who came was Cluth, the son of Clada and brother of Cladwigan, and he talked with Amarahiti in the days when she was still in her father's household. In those days she sat at the place of the talking stone, which still stands in its place, for she was among those who sought to know the speech of the barbarians. In the season of fruitfulness, the true wife of Clada was overcome with a sickness which no one among her own people could cure, not even the wise men or priests who were able enough in such things. Therefore, Cluth came to Romana, the mother of Amarahit, Therefore, Cluth came to Ramana, the mother of Amarahiti, who was known afar for her skill with herbs. Amarahiti came with Cluth. When Ramana understood his needs, she and Amarahiti went with him, taking two armed men and men of the barbarians. The peace of Cladwigan went before them. They came to the place where the true wife of Clada lay on the evening of the second day. The wise men and priests went among the people, muttering against the women, and dark looks were cast upon Ramana. The mother of Amarahiti cleansed the sick woman with ashes and made a brew of herbs and bitter bark of the river ash. She sat by the She sat by the true wife of Clada, and in the morning the sick body no longer burned, neither did it consume itself. When the priests of the barbarians heard about it, they declared it was not a thing of goodness, but something brought about by evil arts. They told people a devil was loosed among them, whose trailing vapors they saw going among the huts. When darkness came that night, there were loud cries among the barbarians, for many were seized with weakness and vomiting. But this was something brought about by the priests, and not by the devil. Among the barbarians, the priests were held in high regard, and so the true wife of Clada sought to appease them. She called the highest of the priests to ask her, and at she called the highest of the priests to her and asked him what should be done to make the evil depart and leave the people in peace. The priest told her that if the two foreign women were sent away, their evil and the devil would be. Man, I cannot read right now. The priest told her that if the two foreign women were sent away, their evil and the devil would depart with them. He asked her to let her own people treat her after their own manner. He told her that the thing which cured sickness in another race would not cure sickness in theirs. The true wife of Clada, seeking to avoid strife and being already half cured, said it would be done as he wished. So Amarahiti and her mother departed, together with their servants and the armed men who accompanied them. On the night after they left, the true wife of Clada died, with vomit stopping in her throat. Then the priests made their voices heard among the barbarians and told them to behold the work of the devil which remained among them. They said it had not departed, nor would it leave until it was appeased. They spoke in such a manner that men of the barbarians set out in haste and came upon the women of Cluth, who with armed men were preparing to leave their camping place. When Cluth heard the words of the priests spoken by those who came, he was dismayed and knew not what to do. There was a man among those who came, who spoke many words to Cluth, so that he was stirred up against our women. For Cluth was a barbarian, and their ways were his ways." Here some 350 words are missing. It resumes, Amarahiti turned her face towards Cluth and told him that by strength alone he had brought her to this distant place and its stronghold, that through his stubbornness her people had died and her mother had been wounded. She said that though the priests called for the sacrifice of her modesty, after the customs of his people, she was already made sacred to a man of her own and would rather die than be degraded. She asked him what would his She asked him what would be his pleasure, and would it not be even less than that given by a woman with a price, who would at any rate be willing to please? What a small pleasure that is set against the pleasure women can really give. There are several lines missing here. 
Kluth stood apart with his arms. Another missing line. The priests... The priests prepared the cage and Amarahiti was fetched. Words missing. Stood by with dignified modesty. Her mother sat apart before the image. Large section missing here. It begins again. Away Kluth lay against the bowl of the tree, and when they fetched her to him, he raised himself up. He hardly stood, for he was bloodied and weak. Amarihiti told him that never had woman beheld a braver man, though a foolish one. And down at the water's edge lay Kabul Kai, and the men who had cut the lashings off the structure larped his wounds. The old man who had read the omens and divided the people bade those nearby to carry Kluth to the riverbank. When they came nearby, Kabul Kai had disappeared into the thickets of the forest, and the men of Kelkilith remained on the other side. They left the destroyed place and the buried dead behind them, and Amarahiti stayed in the keeping of the priests of Cladwegan. In this manner, they came to the place where Cladwegan and his warriors were assembled to meet the enemy. They were received joyfully, but there were sorrowful Kabul Kai whose cunning had carried the day. They feared him, thinking he had been taken by the Wiktas. Whoa, Wiktas. They feared him, thinking he had been taken by the Wiktas. Kluth was slain in the battle with the Wiktas and the men of Broad Knives at the crossing of the river now called by the barbarians Kluthradrowin. Whoa. Kluthradrowin. 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 Kluth was slain in the battle with the Wiktas and the men of broad knives at the crossing of the river now called by the barbarians Kluthradrodwin. Kabul Kai was not taken, though he was sorely wounded. His face was torn when the logs fell upon him. So he remained hidden within the forest, the companion of beasts, for his appearance caused men to shudder. When the leaves left the trees in the fall of the year, he came close into the city, near the boundary where Amarahiti was wont to sit, by the side of the flowing stream, and the winter he was clothed with skins and moved hardly. At the time of the midwinter feast of the barbarians, the people of the city met them on common ground beyond the city and before the forest. Fires were lit and there was feasting and revelry. Gifts were exchanged between the people of the city and the barbarians. Amarahiti was sorrowful because of this and withdrew into some... Oh. There was an image part missing. Amarahiti was sorrowful because of this and withdrew into some bushes close by the stream. With her were the two hounds. The hounds smelled out Kabul Kai, for he had come close, being drawn by the warmth and cheerfulness at the place of feasting. They leapt upon They leapt upon him gladly, for they knew him. Oh, come on. They leapt upon him gladly, for they knew him. Kabul Kai sought to escape back into the forest, but Amarahiti caught him by the hand. She looked at him and fell on his neck with tears. She covered him with her cloak of conifer, and when her two attendants came, they carried him off to his sheltered place close by the stream. Some five paragraphs are missing. It goes on. The most skillful with herbs among them, in the spring of the year they returned as husband and wife and were welcomed with a great feast. They were remarried within the house of Kabul Kai. The fortress of Kluth was built up again by Kabul Kai according to his promise, and the sons of Kluth lived there in these days. It stands on high ground rising out of the waters, surrounded by a high wall of logs. The city was built and finished with a wall which was two walls of wood with soil between. Men came in ships with cloth and pottery with things of metal and shells and beads. The barbarians gave much for cloth dyed scarlet, for their tree was blue for their tree blue is not fast in cloth.
Scarlet is made nowhere except in the land of the Sons of Fire, where a white fish churns scarlet under the warmth of the sun. Men say that those who bring the scarlet cloth declare it to have been found in this manner. A man was out hunting with his dog, and while they walked along the strand, the dog caught a fish which it carried to its master in its mouth. The man saw a scarlet stain on the dog's mouth and wiped it away with a piece of linen. When the color could not be withdrawn from the cloth, it was taken to a dyer who sought out the thing that had made it. The temple was built within the city and raised up on logs. Beside it was the place of instruction, and just before it was the place of exchanging. It stands today as a sanctuary and a center for those who seek the light. In its keeping are the records of the children of light, who are the children of the written word. But all is not well with the heart and the spirit of the city, which is the people. A city lives not by the wood and stones which it is built. Therefore, since the coming of Salmon, of the Bar Hod boy, and those who follow Ameth, we who are the heart of the children of light prepare our departure. Some words are missing. By the waters of Glaith, not far distant where we may dwell by ourselves. The first books we leave in the temple with those who guard them. But we have made other books which will go with us. In another place we will make them incorruptible. Peace missing. This we leave with you as we also take it with us, so that it may not be lost. The names are written, and the seals placed. End chapter 14. <sighs> Caleb, what's up, brother? I have times like that when I go to read. I just leave it until I am pulled back. I know, it's unfortunate. There's a couple texts. I think there's a lot in, like, the Gnostic literature and a ton in the Sumerian creation tablets and stuff like that. I, got, I wanted to do a couple audiobooks on the Sumerian text and I was like oh my god like ha over half the text is missing on some of those things it's like what's the point <laughs> um, sorry y'all I felt like I don't know if it was the dogs or what but I feel like I was off my game tonight It's been a long day, uh, a long day at work. Maybe that's it. And I was like, should I relax tonight? And I was like, nah, man, we gotta knock out that Colburn audiobook. It's been like a month. It's been a, it's been a month. I should have finished this thing weeks ago. Chapter 15 is next. How many? We're on page 160 of 183, so the book's almost done. Yeah, the book's almost done. Oh yeah. Maybe we'll finish. Maybe we'll do a super long, <laughs> super long audiobook to maybe tomorrow. When I am. Um, I wish I could do different times for anyone listening to this in a different country early in the day, but the dogs are super active during the day, so that's not really feasible. We gotta wait until nighttime. When I can get a good amount of edibles inside of them and they don't bark. <laughs> How you guys doing out there? Did you did you did you enjoy the text? Thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you're new, subscribe. That's a good way to support the channel. Thank you guys for being here and hanging out. Subscribe if you're new. Let's crack in. Take your shoes off. Stay. Make it. Hey, make yourselves at home. Mikasa, Esukasa. Mikasa, Esukasa. Casa. Asukasa. Or should we just keep reading this tonight until it's finished? <laughs> should we just push through? It's, I mean, I guess it's only 8 o'clock. We could probably finish this thing by 10 if we just kept fucking slapping in.
Maybe I can just go burn a whole bunch of ganja right now and slap it until we finish. think Am I just done? Do you partake in the ganja? Should, should I go rolling up real quick? Do you guys? <laughs> oh, hi, moon baby. Should we go rolling up and continue the next chapter? <laughs> the next chapter's kind of short, I guess. The Book of Codneys, chapter 15. snacks that's what I want I want snacks Charmant Lotrier I'm happy you enjoyed it Marisa Marisa Blue Marisa Blue hello Marisa Blue um alright we'll do I wish I had a J pre-rolled but I was like I probably shouldn't but now I'm like I probably should have I'll be, you guys, give me a sec. I'm going to go get my utensils. I'm going to roll a J. And we're going to keep this bitch rolling. All right. We're just going to run it, baby. We're just going to... We're going to give it our all. Hey, can you guys hear the lo-fi in the background? Is that a nice vibe for the for the tablet or for the <laughs> Here, I'll turn it up for you guys.
I got homegrowns from the backyard. I had a nice little winter harvest. It doesn't have a name. One of my homies from out east, from uh, Pennsylvania, I believe, has been stabilizing his own strain, his own. My stickers for my music. You like? My, you guys like my stickers? What's up, Keith G? Bye bye. Everyone loves stickers. I think I'm a... My grander, my Lord of the Rings grander. Check it out. You see that? Yeah, Lord of the Rings gra grander. One, and one, one ring to rule them, all, rule them all and in the darkness bind them. Smells lovely. Oh. So Sherman's from South Africa. Lady Dawn, AKA Compass Concrete is from Australia. Sorry for my terrible Australian accent. Moon Baby, where are you from? Marisa Blue, where are you from? Caleb, you're Caleb. You're from the Midwest, right? Caleb, Caleb. Um, I think I sent oregano out to you one time. Didn't I send out some oregano to you, Caleb? Oregano, <laughs> oregano. I'm tired. Not gonna lie, I am tired. All of you guys aren't commenting because you're packing bowls right now. Anybody having wine? Is anybody keeping it classy for the man of letters right now and having wine? Please tell me one of you is having wine right now. Or like a fancy cocktail or something. I know it's like not very spiritual anymore to have alcohol, but... I, I, I do enjoy a good drink. Those birds are a nice touch. Cheers, everyone. I'm drinking sage. That's what I'm consuming. It's best for the voice. Yo, 40 year old old school. Nice. That's kind of how mine is. It's so the homie doesn't like he's an older cat. He's probably like in his 50s, but with the spirit of like a 20 year old, he's super homies. I met him online. I sell frankincense trees and seeds and like exotic trees on my Etsy shop. And he bought some seeds and he had like a 20% germination rate when he should have only had like a 3% germination rate. The dude's a wizard. Um, and we just hit it off and we're homies and he like sent me a bunch of seeds, like five different strains of seeds and they're like that they're all from the early 90s because he doesn't like the new stuff and I agree I don't like the new stuff well, I like the new stuff but it's like come on relax man we don't need 
We don't need 40% THC. Oh man, see, there goes the demonetization. Gosh darn it. We don't need 40% oregano. You know what I mean? Let's get, come on, man. I'm trying to enjoy myself. Like, I got I got things to do in a little bit, you know? Like, I can't, I can't just be ripped all day. Lemon juice water? Oh, nice. All right. Lemon juice water, that works, too. All over Cali and Georgia, back home in Bama now. All right. What part of California? Moon baby, I hail from California myself. Okay, cheers, man. Should I just read this next chapter with lo-fi? Do you think that'll fit? Or that might be kind of weird. Riverside? Nice. Interesting. Um, I used to play baseball tournaments in Riverside as a child. <laughs> also, what in God's name are you doing out in Riverside? That sounds awful. I'm in Ventura. I'm sure. Oh, uh, two. Two for you, Moon Baby. All right, one. Elos. All right, that's it. I'm not burning any more for any of you guys, too, because I'm... <laughs> just finish this whole... I'll just finish this whole... I get my oregano and, and oil from here. Ooh, all right, there you go. I make a nice alcohol extract of my oregano. <clears throat> all right, let's go. Let's get this next... It's a nice piano riff. I like that. I might have to use that somewhere. So what do you guys think? Should I keep the lo-fi going for this next chapter? It's not going to be in the final recording. It's just the music is just for us right now. Or should I bring the flutes back? It's wild how much of a vibe music sets. Like, Jesus. Uh, What newcomers? Hey, who just come, jumped in the room? How dare you jump in the room and not say hello? Say hi. What's, what's up? Say hey. I just jumped in the room. My name is Bob, and I like to paint. I came here because the title said that this guy is a hologram, and I wanted to hear about that. But it looks like you're not talking at all about this guy being a hologram. So what's good? I got. Like, that's fine. You can say that too. You know, that's totally fine. Marisa Blue says this is good, but I don't know what this is because we're now listening to flutes, but you could have sent that when I was still listening to lo-fi because you guys know how the internet works, so that doesn't help. Um, Compass Concrete, alright, that's thoughtful, thank you. Appreciate that. <clears throat> I just want to burn some frankincense right now <laughs> to this. Hey, which one of you guys can light up some frankincense for us? Maybe it will it will carry over. Born in the LBC, what's up? What's that? Ooh, ah, hi. Summertime in the LBC. Let me hear you say ooh. I summertime in the LBC. I was just in Costa Mesa playing a gig, and I s killed it. My band we slayed, and we got a, an opening act for this big reggae band on the third back in Costa Mesa. 
which is right next to Long Beach, which, which is right next to Long Beach, if you guys like what the hell is this guy talking about. Um, yeah, I like the area. I don't like L.A. too much, but the other side of L.A. I like. I do. I guess let's run, let's run the flutes, I guess. Yeah, it might be a... No, not that one. Come on. All right, <clears throat> our boy or our girl or our indetermined sea flute has got us on the frankincense. Thank you kindly. Thank you kindly. Thank you kindly. All right, let's begin. Chapter 15. <sighs> Chapter 15. Let's go. We're winning an Oscar for this one. Chapter 15. The Book of Cadmies. I, th <laughs> I thought this was by command of our master Yoda. <laughs> Yo, I can't. This is why I can't smoke and do these readings. By command of our master Lodas, son of Cadmus and Carla, by the hand of Orialuga, the rider born of Horthani, set down in the seven and eightieth year of the temple, which is the fourth year in the cycle of Balgrin, and the ninth year of our oath. As man moves in air, so does God move in goodness. As God is incomprehensible to man as mortal man, but comprehensible to him as man in spirit, so was God not a being with the mere attributes of men, but the supreme spirit among spirits. As man stands at the apex of material creation, so was the supreme, the ultimate unity above the spherical plane. From this day forward, we shall be known as the craftsmen of the supreme spirit, and this place upon the waters of Glaith, which we call the Valley of Reeds, known to those about us as Karstflan, shall be called the smithy of the supreme spirit. The boundaries of the land pledged solely unto us are the waters below, upward of the upward of the mark post, three thousand and two score set paces, downward of the mark post, one thousand and twelve set paces. In the water and its divisions, you may fish and gather reeds and cut water herbage over to its furthest bank. Landward of the mark post, at four thousand four score and ten paces, is the stone placed by Kalranith, set upright, and there is the boundary to the east. Outward from this, two thousand and five hundred paces on each side. Outward from this, 2,500 paces on each side is placed a markstone set that all may recognize it. From these stones to the mark posts on the water's edge are the boundaries north and south. Within the boundaries, the land shall be clear of trees and shall be pastured and sown, and therein we shall have our habitations. In the forest about us may be gathered wood, and swine may be fed there, and we may hunt. The house of men shall remain as before, but no longer shall we be divided into parts. Men shall be made men as they have been in the past. If any man be in years and without wife and children, or having a, or having a son who was a man placed in his stead, he may enter wholly into the house of men. No man shall be absent himself from the house of men at his times, unless by a dispensation of the house ruler, or if it be impossible for him to be there. But all time not served shall be served doubly later, unless with the dispension of the house ruler it is waived. Lots of rules. They're giving lots of rules in this chapter. <laughs> what gives? 
The ruler outside the house of men shall be a man chosen by the council, which shall be four men chosen in meeting together at noon, one day before midwinter's eve. The ruler and the council shall govern and judge in all things among us, but they shall not enter these decrees, which shall stand among us as a rock. We will govern our lives by them, and abide by them, and pass them on to those who follow. These together with the words of the holy writ are the candlestick and the container for the mortal light of truth which is among us. They shall be honored by all who walk in that light now and henceforth. They shall be written on copper made incorruptible and placed within the sacred urns together with the records. Yet they shall remain with us and be among us written on tablets of wood. We shall keep the decrees of a sky and abide by them and their punishments, though the punishments may be changed by the council, so that men are lashed with the whip and the women with leathern throngs or wands of wood. We now have with us the decrees of Amos, and they alone shall stand before those of a sky. All other laws shall stand according to the order of their numbering. Where laws are at variance, one shall not be set against another but that which is latest shall stand highest and the others be subordinate. The decrees of the old law which is not written shall be kept only in their keeping be the custom and judgment. Let no man build a habitation of brick or stone upon these lands, for this is an unlawful thing unto the people within whom we dwell. If any decree be set against an... If any decree be set against another, the last written decree shall prevail, except between the decrees of Amos and Haskiah. Let no man change to his benefit the brand mark upon the beast of another, for this is an unlawful thing. If done, the wrong shall be unjusted by restoring double the value, and if done again by restoring trouble. Let no man among us worship otherwise than in the manner of our brotherhood. To the rituals nothing shall be added and nothing taken away. Our beliefs shall be supported manfully, without shame and with all our strength. You shall not be faint-hearted when danger threatens, nor indifferent when hard-pressed. No man among us shall be voiceless when our beliefs are ridiculed or remain passive before our enemies. If anyone become a coward or fail in this, he shall not be numbered among us. The works of men are imperfect, and no man has ever seen the light of truth in absolute purity. Therefore, though two things within the body of our written records may appear contradictory, if not capable of reconciliation through greater understanding, the thing written later, unless a manifest error, shall be more acceptable. It seemed unnecessarily wordy by the translators. Be men of good faith goodwill, and common sense. Nothing passing through the hands of many men escapes contamination. Nothing passing through the hands of many men escapes contamination. Only sincerity and diligence will maintain its purity. Nevertheless, having established something, uphold it steadfastly. In this sphere of falsity, cling to every truth, as a man swept out to sea by the river torrents clings to a log. That was nice, too. All men held captive for any... All men held captive for anything they may have done, and not yet brought before the council or punished, shall be kept encaged at the water's edge. A man may be encaged as a punishment, and the cage either covered or uncovered. If a man must die, he may die either in clean or unclean waters, as is done by the people who surround us. No man shall draw blood to slay in judgment. A man shall take his brother's wife into his household if his brother die and leave her unprotected. The unprotected of any man's bloodkin or lawkin shall become his responsibility. Inasmuch as the Lord of heaven mated with the queen of heaven, brother and sister are not forbidden to each other under the old law. 
A man shall not gaze upon the nakedness of any of his bloodkin or lochen in lust, and no woman shall expose her nakedness to any man, not her husband. Ladies, punishments may be executed either by burning or the cage. Every man shall learn to fight and defend himself with the axe, the bow, the spear, the sword, the javelin, or the sling, and all weapons of the land shall be sharpened. And all weapons of the hand shall be sharpened. Every man among us shall know the words of the holy writ by understanding of the writings or by memory. They shall be cut into his heart as they are on copper and wood. The records shall now be written in the sacred characters and not in letters of the sons of fire. Line for line, the letters of the people of the five red gods shall be used. The letters from the sky, the letters from the sky signs seen by the master of writing. After this, many chapters are lost. All right, that's uh, the end of fifteen. See those nice short one, dude. How fire is this <laughs> track right now, though, man? So nice. Solar logos. Hey, man, what's cracking? That's a dope name. I like that. Overstreet, Moon, Baby, Brandy, Marcy Blue. Um, so much better than the plain audio. I know. I know. I agree. Solar logos, I agree. I do. Altrusion, what's up? I've been Altrusion. I don't know if you've been noticing, but I've been using I, my my dog trainer hasn't come in yet. <laughs> it's running late, but I've been snapping, and I already edited earlier. I, I, I like you said, I edited I, I edited an hour long audio in like <laughs> a kid two minutes or something like that. If that, and it would have been faster if I wasn't like wrestling my child at the same time for my computer anywho um everyone go check out i'll choose in grace media he's if you guys like yourself some occult audiobooks he's your man as well um anywho let's go good evening gods and god good evening solar walk everyone say hi solar logos hi everyone say hi come on in solar logos tell us where you came from tell us your name and what do you like to do for fun? <laughs> and then take a seat at the back. <laughs> That's right. Um, nothing but a G thing. Hey, we were singing some LBC jams earlier, Solo Logos. Now you're coming in here with a nothing but a G thing? Come on. All right, we're going to keep this going. Uh, how long is chapter 16? I think chapter 16 is relatively short as well. Yes, it is. All right, we're going to run it. I might have to run this track back because I like this one a lot. It's like a stand-up. It's a it's a it's a stand-up cello. Um, and the da duke, and it's so what what a dope combo. The stand-up bass, and da duke. Anywho, all right, let's go. Oh wait, hold on. For all of you that were joining, that were joining in, joining in on the fun. We have our oregano. One of the fams got us in the frankincense resin. Whoever was burning frankincense resin for us in the squad, raise your hand. Let us know. Thank we appreciate the vibe. We're 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 feeling it in the etheric. Somehow, in that quantum field, we're feeling it. Thank you. We appreciate that. Ooh, Solar Logos retracted a message. Was it... <laughs> was it bad? It's always funny, because I can see your guys' messages when you retract them still. <gasps> bum, bum, bum. All right, let's go. Chapter 16, The Reconstruction by Kedarith.
The master was seated at his table, and about him in a half circle were those who instructed. Uh, the master was seated at his table, and about him in a half circle were those he instructed, and he taught them in this manner. My brothers, these are the ordinances of living and the laws which are the ordinances of men. No law, whether it be the supreme spirit or of man, wholly produces happiness and causes no sorrow. So, to be worthy and in so, to be worthy and in good or in an ordinance, a law must produce more contentment and happiness than it prevents. It must also prevent more sorrow and confusion than it produces or would be a work of wickedness and a memorial to the follies of men. What a st <laughs> I wish they had that written in to laws now. Like, hey, you can't make any laws that that leave people in more confusion than than clarity. <laughs> like, let's not be ridiculous, otherwise they're useful and wicked or useless and wicked. Um someone should send the Colbrin over to Congress. Anywho. Pleasure never comes unadulterated, and no form of goodness which man seeks to promote is unencumbered with restriction. Nonetheless, there is no form of goodness which is unproductive of happiness in the hands of those governed with wisdom. Joy and sorrow, pain and pleasure, success and failure are all molding processes operating on the spirits and natures of men. Neither of the opposites is of less importance than the other. These were the things taught. The nature of every person is different, and all tend to drift towards the circles with accord within their natures. Therefore we set a standard, which not all will find acceptable, so that only those whose natures demand the best find our company congenial. Unless the soul of each man and woman is developed and disciplined by the restraints of spiritual and material decrees, it cannot rise above its earthly elements. As the earthly body must be kept fit by discipline and self-control and become gross and weak through overindulgence or indifference, so is the spirit controlling the body required to exercise restraint. Every law, whether arising in the sphere of the spirit or the sphere of matter, suppresses suppresses something arising out of the nature of man and therefore calls for the exercise of restraint and forbearance. Yet it is not true that though every just law restrains something within men and women, it also restricts evil and things which are not good. The less a law imposes upon men and women, and the more it imposes upon the things detrimental to their welfare, the better the law. All laws are paid for out of the treasury of freedom. The lower the cost, the better the law. The laws of earthly rulers are kept by force of arms, but the keeping of the higher spiritual laws can only be ensured through enlightenment and wisdom. The causes of misjudgments, sorrow, and remorse stem more frequently from breaches in spiritual laws than in earthly ones. Moral laws and restraints are essential to the progress and welfare of mankind when passions are unrestricted and weaknesses unfenced by moral laws, various forms of vice and perversions become accepted and sap the stamina of nations. When the abnormal is given free access to intrude upon the normal, the nation degenerates, the race is contaminated, and mankind suffers a reverse. The great law places an obligation upon mankind to improve itself. Every man and woman must safeguard their heritage and raise themselves above earthly sordidness. This is one of the reasons for living. The struggle of life is with man, the struggle of man is with himself.
Wise leaders in every land and age have made laws restraining the weak and abnormal from satisfying their carnal appetites and immoral urges. If their own uncontrolled desires were allowed freedom to dictate their actions, then not only would the weak and abnormal destroy themselves, but they would be like a cancer in the living body of mankind. The sacred book tells us that the nature of man contains a sense of shame. This is so. And it is there that he may also know the meaning of decency and be proud of himself as a man. It is there to make a better state known to him, a state of spiritual cleanliness and purity. Such knowledge does not come naturally to man any more than good pastures come naturally to the husbandman. The city over the hill was founded in goodness, and its founders were not men who found pleasure in wickedness. Nonetheless, as the years passed, it became apparent that all was not well within its walls. Now because of the inclination of its inhabitants, the city's days are numbered. The men come across the sea in ships from the south, bringing things much sought after by the people who surround us, who go into the city to exchange the things they have caught or grown, or which have been dug out of the ground. I lost my spot. Things are exchanged in the marketplace of the city, but they are for the enjoyment of the body, not the satisfaction of the soul. Nonetheless, men will always be driven by their very natures to seek for and obtain things which do not satisfy an earthly appetite. Such things are those which delight the hearts of men by their beauty, or bring inward joy and contentment. Also things which bring pleasure to loved ones, and things which inspire men to do noble deeds. With all the earthliness of man, the things most sought and desired are those which stir the forces within the soul, and not the forces within the body. When it otherwise mankind... When it is otherwise... Mankind will slip backwards towards the beasts. This is written in our tongue through a rethinking of the text by Anabadol. Through a rethinking of the text by Anabadol. All right, that was the end of chapter 16. And now these words, it's like the book would be a lot easier to read if it had a hundred small chapters than if it had three really long chapters <laughs> if that makes any sense I'd rather have a hundred small ones than three big ones Yeah, that was an interesting one, huh? Do you guys like that chapter? I kind of like that one. That one was like, all right, I see you. I see you. Jesus. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I see you, Solar Logos. I see you out there. Compass, Altrusian, Caleb, Solar, Moon Baby, uh, Marisa Blue, Marisa Blue, thank you. Um, you got munchies. Moon Baby's got munchies for us. Dope. Likewise. Likewise. Overstate. Was it say some Overstreet? What's up, Overstreet? I had a old oh, my old teammate at university his name was Tyler Overstreet and we called him Overstreet yeah that was a good one I love that one too or I like that one a lot oh there's a marriage pledge the next chapter is part of a marriage pledge whoa
Whoa, since pretty savage. <laughs> It's just a whole bunch of rules about marriage and like scanning ahead, and it's kind of weird. But I mean, it's, it's a 1500 year old book, I guess it can. <laughs> I guess what? Well, it I guess it should be a little weirder. Um, I know, so yeah, we would, yes, we'd, I did. It's nice. It, I feel like it did, it's, it's, it's an interesting flow to catch. After the pop, uh, after the pop, we'll we'll finish this last one. This last one's like two seconds long. And then I'm going to get in snacks inside, and we'll just have to reconvene tomorrow. Let's go, let's go, baby, let's go. Chapter seventeen, part of a marriage pledge. My name is Farsis, from the house of Galath, and I am without wife. These are my pledges to Arowitz of Glendargi. Here, in the light of day, before the Supreme Spirit, and before all men, in the sight of my father Velen and your mother Garonwe, I establish you as my wife. It's kind of funny, I'm like trying to get into it, and so I'm imagining myself pledging... 1500 year old rights to my wife and I'm just like I'm there you know what I mean I'm that guy right now I, just, I can feel him I'm just like yes yeah. as my wife I'm just, I have like a cloak on and maybe a, a dagger or a sword somewhere I probably don't know how to use it but like you never know so you just carried it anyways got like sandals on and shit um, the grass is blowing I'm picturing a scene from Gladiator and <laughs> anywho I shall not fail I shall not fail to consult you before I take another wife, and you will never be other than head wife. You will never lack for food and clothing, though the food may be uncooked and the cloth unwoven. A roof shall always cover your head and a weapon be ever ready for your protection. I will always consider... I will always be considerate of your wants and always careful in things relating to your welfare. Whatever good fortune comes, it will be shared with you and our children. I will, I will protect you through every year of my life and shelter you from every calamity to the best of my ability. An insult to you shall be an insult to me and every man of my blood. As from this day, my house is yours. What your father and your father's house were to you before, now am I and my house. Should greater duties call me from your side, I will take every precaution for your safety and your welfare. Should I leave you through any change of heart or darkening of thoughts, or should I slight the pledge given here and take to myself another woman in your stead, then, unless you have brought shame on me and my house by committing the great wickedness of women, I shall pay to your father's house twice the bridal price. I thought I was going to say something like, then God will smite me down. And he's like, eh, then I'll pay your dad twice what he paid me to marry you. So like, <laughs> I shall also bestow upon you a half share of our property and possessions joined together since marriage. Each of our children shall be given its proper portion of all my property and possessions, and it shall be established in the hands of the king's servants. Whatever comes to you as a bridal gift or is brought with you as your own shall be yours. I shall always safeguard and defend it, and will never take it to myself so that you are deprived of it, unless for the one wrong which defiles my house and mocks my name. Whatever your father gives shall be ours, after the custom of the great laws. Your infirmities are accepted to be shared with you, and the children you bear shall always be mine. No man shall ever mock you or abuse you without my hand being against him. No man shall ever wrongfully lay hands upon you, for you are mine now and for always. 
It will not neglect the upbringing of our children. I will not neglect the upbringing of our children, but they shall be raised according to my own light. You may follow your own creed even as I follow mine, each being tolerant towards the other. Those are my pledges, my hand, and my token. I have a few thoughts about this. One, why is it only the male giving pledges? Like, I know damn well the women were making pledges back then, too, even if they were, like, what's the word, misogynistic? But they, they still had vowels. Like, why don't you include the female vowels? Like, why aren't they written down? One. Two, how do you guys feel about the vowels in such a way where it's like, I will always do this, I will always do that. It's like super like, I got you, and then and then it finishes with unless. <laughs> it's like, I will be there for you always, and then as you fuck up, then I'm taking all your shit. <laughs> it's like, I will be there for you always, unless you fuck up, or unless I fuck up. And if I do, then I'm gonna, I'll pay your dad twice as much as he paid me. Um, my bad, you know, like, like what if... I'm not necessarily opposed to that because then it's like it, it would save us a lot of headache for example two people get married say, I will be there for you always I love you no matter what unconditional love baby yeah and I mean I'm not a Scrooge I'm a very optimistic like see you know rose colored glasses kind of dude but let's be real no, no one loves unconditionally in marriage like you cheat on your spouse they're gonna divorce you or, or, or at least you know what I mean <laughs> or they or they sh- and if they don't, they they probably should have, or they want to. They just don't like you. And know I mean, like you, you, or like or like, don't mentally abuse me. Like I'm not gonna be with you in marriage if you mentally. You just anywho. Well, I'm like, it's not as romantic to say it the old school way, but what what if it's what if it makes more sense that way? What if we should be doing it like that? What if we should be doing it like that? Because then it'd be like. Hey, I will love you forever unless you cheat on me. <laughs> then, you know, then I'm taking everything back. Okay, then everything's mine. And then when it's like that person cheats, and the girl's like, "Yo, my husband cheated on me," and taking the, the, and, you know, then he loses. There's no lawyers. There's no nothing. There's no litigation. There's no. You don't have to pay fees. You don't have to pay taxes. It's just like you fuck up. We, we talked about this already. You're done. I'm out of here. Give me my stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's also not very sexy or, or, or romantic or like. The, it's the holiday, you know what I mean? Like, as as everyone imagines their wedding day should be. Um, what do you think? I'm 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 kind of playing devil's advocate. I don't I, I'm not saying it, like it has to be that way. I'm just I'm playing devil's advocate, speaking as if. <laughs> what do you guys think? Beautifully spoken and an ass at the same time. So Brandy says, "Fuck that guy." <laughs> <laughs> I'm cussing because I think the video's already been demonetized, so I don't think it matters at this point. Um, uh, I'm reading your guys' comments. Give me a second to catch up. If you can keep going, oh, okay, that's before the music. Is, uh, of the elect, the woman is a true faith married to Christ. Wow, what powerful wedding vows. <laughs> Ancient American ways. <laughs> oh, how life repeats. Oh, sorry, I'm still reading your guys' comments. Surrender the soul over to him. I want to marry. <laughs> Do you think they went for 50%? See, like today's marriage is 50% failure rate. Now, the, the interesting thing is, I think it's it's just a, maybe it's more socially acceptable. So maybe people were just as miserable in the past with marrying people. They just couldn't divorce, you know? It's very socially accept- accepted to just divorce someone. I mean, for, for just no, no reason at all. I'm not saying this is good or bad, but someone could just be like, I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> and that's it. It's like, oh my God, yeah, I liked him. Our children are great. Oh yeah, she's beautiful. I love it. She did everything for me. But like, you know, I just, I don't know. Just peace out. I was just, I was over it. You know? <laughs> like, that's what people roll now. Um, whereas in the past, I feel like it might have been a little more. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. 
Oh, that was a point, though, right? The 50%. Uh, who's, who's to say people are happier now than, than in the past? Even though I think stat... St st uh, it's, it's hard to say. It's like, how do we define happiness? You can, you can say something like, oh, yeah, people are more happy today because we have more stuff. We have more ease of life. But that could also be the very thing that's making people so sad today. It's, it's almost too easy. Depression and anxiety are very, or, or are very, at least depression is very like, and anxiety. I see them almost as the same thing, and they're both like, they strike me as very modern. Like, it, like if you back in the day, yeah, you, you you could die at any moment. But if you're growing your own food and you're hunting your own food, and you're like. Like if you caught, if you if you help the squad catch a deer, you your your tribe or your little village they didn't die they didn't die that winter. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I feel like having that sort of accomplishment or at least the potential for that sort of accomplishment within within fingers reach every day is a lot different than someone now who it's almost like nothing you do. Okay, our our lives aren't built for extreme meaning. Our, our or at least American society isn't built for extreme meaning. It's built to be just a cog in the machine. Whether that's devilish or just how it goes, I don't know. But point is, most people, just, you have your regular job that gives you money so that you can buy trinkets and pay for rent and, you know, and just exist. <laughs> You're not going to die. It's like no one's ever going to run out of money because the government will give you food or will give you food stamps or like... Even if even if it's living like ass, you're still going to be living relatively comfortably in modern society. And I feel like that's sort of I don't know. That's, sorry, that was another tangent. It's just it's post reading tangent hour, I guess. Um, it's meant to to enslave, and it did. Yeah, it does seem sort of an enslavement, doesn't it? <laughs> It does. No meaning. Yeah, yeah, no meaning. Definitely, definitely lack of meaning in people's lives today, and that's not, that's not an easy fix. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Some, some people seem to have figured it out, right? So, I find meaning in reading. Like, I get done with these, and I go inside, and I'm like, fuck, that was a good life. Like, there was, what, there's 20 people in there. People were vibing. The comments were good. People were laughing. Like, damn, that was, like got some of the Colburn Bible knocked out, right? So that's another, like, a goal accomplished. All right, maybe all right, we, we gained three subscribers from that live. Fuck yeah. Like, all right, good movement. Like, this, it's, it, they're small, but it does, there are, they are little shots of dopamine, little shots of serotonin, and, like, shots of, 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 of chemical accomplishment that, that a lot of people struggle to find, and it's, like, so... I don't know. I don't know. That's what these old scrolls are telling us how to get out of Babylon. Dang, see, Don? All right. See, working, Don. It's like, oh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> that's why we learn shit, right? That's why we go back. That's why we try to cut through. Cut through the, cut through the nonsense. Solar, you took back your message again. All right, my butt's hurting. This chair's not very comfy. Thank you guys for watching. We had 20 people. This is like, this is like, normally, unless I'm doing a super clickbaity live or something, we don't have people chilling in the 20s. Usually for our lives, we only have a couple people when I'm doing the readings. Nice, they've been comfy. What's up? Sorry, I can't keep reading for you guys. I got snacks inside. There's homemade brownies. And I told my girl to leave me the four corners because it's like that part of the brownie. I don't like the middle of the brownie where it's all soft and gooey. I like the like in between where part of it's it's like chewy gooey. It's like chewy on part of it where it's like like it's 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 soft on the bite, but 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 hard on the finish, on the clothes, and it's just all oh, oh man. I got I got four of those waiting for me on the inside. Um, indeed, he knows what he's doing when he selected his book. Uh, no, thank you, Charmant Lotier. Thank you. Thank all of you guys. Salavi, Brandy, 
you want to support the channel, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. That's a good way of supporting the channel. Um, or just be here next time you run the live. So Solar, Logos, Moon Baby. Uh, who else? Who else was in here? Don, Caleb, Brandy. What's that? I think that's the last commenters. All you other flies on the walls. Just so you guys know that what what I at least fantasize that the flies in the walls are doing during my lives is they're just like in a dark room on the couch after a long ass day like fuck this world I need to like my soul my soul needs to tap into something higher for a bit and they turn off the lights and light some candles or pour some tea or roll some oregano or something and this is just on in the background and we're reading and just that's what I fantasize is going on so thank you guys for for playing that role at least in my head <laughs> Whatever other role is actually going on, that is also much appreciated. Um, but thank you for the compliments and whatnot. Thank you, Moon Baby. So, um, oh, John Milks. I was late, so I just, oh, okay, that works too. Nice. John was here too. What's up? All right, for all, I got to go though, because those banners just sounded good. Thank you guys. I, I, I'll, work is running short tomorrow. I can't start the lives until the dogs are done barking anyways, which is usually like 7 p.m. PST. But um, we'll see what time we come on. All right. Thank you guys so much for chillinses and being homies. And um, I'll see you soon.